Hello, I'm Chris Heilman and this is HTML5 and the future of the web. This talk was originally given at the Web Visions Barcelona conference together with my colleague Crystal Beasley, but as my computer broke, I couldn't do any recording this time, so I do a voiceover now. So without further ado, here we go. This talk is being given over and over again. I've seen it at several conferences by several speakers. The last one I saw was Eric Biddleman at Google I.O. and he did a really great job. If you look on YouTube for uh, the future of HTML5, you will see lots and lots of talks and people will tell you what the future of HTML5 is. But in reality, you as developers should be the ones that define that and not some browser maker that come up with random things that might be cool to have. And the normal flow of that talk is always the same. I show you incredible stuff in a special browser with all kind of flags turned on that only works on my computer. You try it out later and actually find that it doesn't work for you at all. And at the same time, your boss is behind you and tells you why you're not working on that Internet Explorer bug that you had to fix a few months ago. So in essence, it ends up with me being awesome and you being frustrated. And that doesn't help anybody. I think this is not what a talk is about and this is not what we should be doing. We should not be all be inspired and amazed by talks, but we should inspire to use the things that we hear in these talks and give feedback when it doesn't work for us. I think there's something broken. Something is disconnected between the design scene and people that do day-to-day -day web development and browser vendors. We innovate great things in HTML5, but you can't use them if they work across browsers. And instead of actually complaining about this and making browser vendors talk to each other, people go a different route. And this route is abstractions. People are actually excited about abstractions. Instead of doing something with the standards, we just come up with another abstraction. This is partly the heritage of things like jQuery and JavaScript libraries that actually work around issues that we had before. So instead of just writing JavaScript and complaining that the DOM is broken and we don't have the functions that we need, we came up with a different library and a lot of people learn jQuery now and don't even know JavaScript anymore. So expect jQuery to be available in every product out there. Another one is uh, vendor prefixes. Uh, vendor prefixes in CSS are a pain to use. We understand that. But it doesn't make sense to actually go into a less and SAS world and learn these syntaxes as the first syntax instead of giving them all a go and kicking the tires of syntaxes and vendor prefixes and giving us feedback that one thing doesn't work and another one does work. The whole idea of vendor prefixes was that browsers test out different things and try out different things and when they don't work, we discard them, and when they work, we actually agree on one syntax. If the market out there uses something completely different, what are vendor prefixes for? I think the problem is that everybody wants to be a creator. People are very excited about building their own library and making life so much easier. We made our life as developers so easy, we shouldn't have to do any work at all anymore, but instead we invent new libraries all the time, and we invent new CSS frameworks and ways to work with CSS, rather than just looking at the standards and actually forcing browser vendors to stop working against each other and actually working with each other on something. So everybody's a creator. Last year we had 37 new microlibraries and 10 new innovative CSS frameworks. And these are just two numbers that are just randomly made up. I think all in all we forgot about the magic of learning and hearing. This is a great picture of a boy who actually ha hears for the first time in his life by getting a hearing aid which he didn't have before. And that a kind of amazement should be in us every single day. We should be excited about the cool things we do and we should be listening and learning them rather than talking about them. We talk about new things all the time. We try to innovate constantly and we're very excited about being that guy that came up with that new cool thing that everybody should be using. We've got two ears and one mouth and sadly enough we, we talk more than we listen. Mozilla has a great project called WebMaker and what we do there is innovate by giving people technologies and making people understand what web technologies are about. One of the things we have is Mozilla Thimble. This is a text editor with an output immediately next to it that allows people to do their first HTML and see immediately when they've done something wrong or when they've done something right. We actually start with HTML documents that are broken and give them instructions in comments how to fix them. And it's very exciting for people to out of a sudden 
sudden see a map of a flight, for example, work properly just because they closed a certain tag or they put quotes around something. This is a kid in Japan that was in one of those things and it was just wonderful to see her finding out new things and explaining everything to that little Firefox. And I want all of us to be that excited. We should not forget that not everybody is a web developer and people think that what think what we do is magic. So let's get excited about these things and not just complain that everything is broken and we need to have an abstraction layer on top of an abstraction layer to get things done. So on the flight over from San Francisco to Barcelona, I saw the Lorax and it was a pretty cute movie and I thought it was interesting to see that quote in there that says, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. And this is exactly what I'm talking about here. You, we cannot just complain about things and we cannot just wait for browser vendors to come up with the best solution out there. We need you to complain, we need you to care and we need you to play with the things that browsers are doing. So, inspired by the Lorex, I thought it's a good idea to give the rest of the talk in Dr. Seuss rhyming style, which of course is a bit of a weird thing, but I thought a lot of the people in the audience have kids. So, you can actually read those things out to them as a, uh, before they go to sleep, and you can learn something about the web at the same time. To make that easier for you, I put the whole thing on GitHub, so probably when you don't want to listen to me doing that, you can read it yourself and you can have fun with your kids and learn something about the web of the future at the same time. So without further ado, let's go into the rhyming. There's a big web out there. It's huge, I tell you. It spans the whole world, but it was boring and blue. Then change came about in the shape of a fox. It was cunning and open and it broke all the locks. Others showed up and joined the good fight, a singer, an adventurer and a shiny new knight. These all played together and spoke the same tongue, which brought back old players to join them in song. A standard was set and it changed a few things, a richer web for apps was the promise it brings. Bah standards, who needs them, some flashy ones said, till a phone that was smart kicked them out of its bed. We move past one standard as web workers richer, so HTML5 and friends paints a much better picture. Things that are fun should be shiny and cool, that's why new standards bring many a new tool. Watching and hearing are what people like to do, using audio and video is simple and you can do it too. Both of them are web native, which is a reason to clap, they can interact with other content and Mozilla Popcorn makes that a snap. If beats and frequencies are what you need to play, check out the Web Audio API. It gives you just that, even today. To play nice with batteries, use Request Animation Frame. Don't let it stop you that it has such a long name. 3D graphics are thrilling, as gamers will tell. We now have that on the web, and it's called WebGL. Water goes everywhere you pour it, just ask me about my MacBook Air. Media queries allow you to be as fluid and respond instead of despair. Natural movements are smooth, just open your eyes. With CSS animation, transforms and transition, you can mimic this. Nice! The web means you need to be online, I hear smarty pants gloat. Well, we have offline storage, so here, take your code. Got a cam and some friends, and do you want to chat? WebRTC is what you need, even to show off your cat. Sometimes rhymes don't come easy, as you just became aware, so let's move ahead quickly. This was just too much to bear. An artist needs a canvas, and HTML5 gave us that. Read, write, and convert pixels, all in the client. It's mad. We don't have rich elements, many people complain. Use web components with X tag and create them, even easy to maintain. Passwords are tough, it is easy to see, so allow login with emails using browser ID. The web is a mess, with third-party buttons abound. Web intents make them pointless, let's not have them around. By design, HTML5 is forgiving, its parser is great. It didn't want to break the web, so let's not break it in its stead. Of course you can write weird things, and they will work, there's no doubt. But will they be readable by others? This is what it's about. You don't create for yourself or your friends who are the same. You develop for the next guy, so make sure you're not to blame. You don't jump in a river if you don't know its depth. On the web using Modernizer should be your first step. 
Give new stuff to new players and use it to enhance. Don't support when it's not needed. i6 only walks. It can't dance. With a vendor prefix browsers tell you this is not ready. So by all means give them a go, but don't expect to go steady. And those prefixes vanish, you mustn't forget. End with a prefix less version. It's your very best bet. So we ask you to help us build a web that will last, be future friendly and look forward and stop building for the past. The web is on phones, tablets, computers, TVs. We have to move forward or else our existence will cease. Hardware that is locked up is not what we're about, so check out Firefox OS. If you like the web, you like it, no doubt. Last but not least, if you find something's wrong, please file a bug and tell us this is how things get done. So there you have a lot to play with. Check out and share. We really want you to do that. Come on, show us you care. So well done for reading and listening and going great length. That's all we got time for, so goodbye and thanks.